Hi guys, welcome back. This is Match Hat number 71, featuring one of the greatest computer role-playing games of all time, Michael Cranford's Tales of the Unknown Volume 1. Tale is one of my favorite games of all time. It's one of the games that really got a good grip on me and made me think that maybe gaming was going to be more than just a childish pastime for me. I really, really got absorbed into this game. Now, it's a very difficult game. Some would say insanely difficult. Some might even say sadistic, as you'll see. It's quite a challenge just lasting beyond uh, the first combat sequence. This is not a hand-holding game, and it really shows just how the stark contrast can be between modern games and old-school classics like The Bard's Tale. Uh, this, this was a time when developers didn't try to coddle gamers. It was sink or swim, fly, or hit the ground and go splat! Very difficult game. Now, this game was developed by Michael Cranford, who's a student at Berkeley, and he had been playing a lot of wizardry I kept thinking that he could do a little better. Uh, specifically, he wanted to create a better world, so instead of those uh, wireframe uh, graphics of wizardry, wanted to have full color, uh, really nice, uh, detailed city graphics. Make you feel like you were in a place, a real place, a scare or break. And I think he succeeded at that. Anyway, we've got a lot to cover here, so without further ado, here is The Bard's Tale. Now, of course, the first thing you need to do in The Bard's Tale, or pretty much any computer role-playing game that's <laughs> worth its virtual dice, is to create an entire party of adventurers, dear companions, who will struggle against the greatest odds and face death side by side. Now, The Bard's Tale gives you a lot of options. You actually have ten different classes to choose from here. Now, the, an interesting side note is that Michael Cranford originally wanted to call this game Master of the Seven Magics, and each class would be a type of magic user. But he changed his mind about that, and we ended up with something pretty familiar to anyone who plays Dungeons & Dragons. You know, you can read a lot of different opinions and strategy guides about the recommended party makeup, but you got to have a bard in the party. I mean, come on, it is the bard's tale. He's a really cool character. Another interesting note, he was a complete afterthought. Uh, Michael <laughs> just sort of thought him up at the last minute after a lot of the game had been uh, designed. So uh, there you go. That's how innovation strikes sometimes. Now, I would advise you not to get too close to these characters yet because they're completely unarmed and you've got to make your way to the store uh, before you get attacked. Oops, but unfortunately I've been attacked. I can try to run away. As you see, I've already been attacked again, this time by six hobgoblins and one hobbit. I tried to run away. I couldn't. So now I have to attack these guys I pretty much completely naked without any weapons or armor and you will probably anticipate the result of that the uh, game does come with a party that's already pre-equipped uh, that's definitely recommended and you can also import characters from some other games including uh, wizardry and ultima a pretty interesting option there i've never tried it as you can see, these guys are giving me a royal ass beating. I already got some dead characters, including Matt. Oh god, what am I going to do without him? The manual just says, this is okay, just go back to the tavern, create some new characters, and go on about your business. But uh, fortunately, we can, thanks to modern emulation, save the state anytime we want and reload. Now here we are at Garth's shop. 
It's a minor victory in and of itself. I've got a little gold to work with. Now, you want to focus your purchases on the first three people, in this case, Matt, Bill, and Chris, because those are the only guys that will be fighting and being attacked by the monsters directly. Uh, Mark, Elizabeth, and Christina there, they will be in the back, out of harm's way. They can cast spells. Uh, Mark, uh, the bard, can play songs, but uh, the first three characters are definitely the most important at the beginning of the game. Now, later, later on, uh, the mages will become far more powerful than uh, the rest of the party. And a lot of people, they will uh, swap their characters in and out. What a lot of people like to do is, as soon as possible, get rid of one of the fighting classes and replace him or her with a uh, another magic user. Because the magic users will be he your heavy artillery, and it's really nice to have a lot of them. Now here you're looking at the typical battle sequence. Uh, these are just kobolds, they're very easy, but the challenge of the game is you never know, especially at the first part of the game, you might run into a very powerful group of monsters, as you saw before. So you have to be very selective in who you fight, try to run away from the more powerful of the enemies, and kill these weaker ones uh, so that you'll have more money to buy better gear. Now once you've been doing this for a few hours, you can find the um, review board, they're hidden in town, uh, but if you go to the taverns and talk to the barkeeper, he'll tell you where they are, and they will decide if you have enough experience points to level up your characters. So obviously, the sooner you can get a few levels, <laughs> uh, the better. This will get a lot easier. Uh, basically what you'll be doing, probably for the first couple of days you play this, at least for the first few hours, is just going around town, attacking these uh, random uh, groups of monsters trying not to not to die. Uh, every time you take damage, you'll need to go back to the temple and pay to have your characters healed. Uh, that can be a bit of a pain. It takes a little while to uh, get started here, and of course, there's lots of grinding. But uh, this is the Bard's Tale. <laughs> Now there were of course many ports of this wonderful game. Here is the one that I played when I was a kid. Of course the Commodore 64 version. And as you can see they did a good job here. It's very faithful to the original Apple II version. And you can also get a look at how, how advanced your characters can get. Uh, these were some that were on the uh, disc image that I used. <laughs> so uh, whoever that was it put many many hours, weeks, if not months into developing their characters. Here we have the Commodore Amiga version which was released a year later and as you can see they've uh, sharpened the graphics here, they've integrated uh, mouse support, uh, there's some icons, uh, the animations are a little bit higher resolution I suppose. Uh, um, I don't know if you would necessarily be that impressed uh, with these graphics even even back then. Remember a magazine review I read was remarking that this was much more than just a straight-up conversion. But I'm, I'm sad to say I haven't really played this. I don't know what the if there's any major changes to the gameplay, um, although it seems to be faithful enough, other than the graphics overhaul, of course. Now here we have uh, the Atari ST version. This appears to be almost an exact, exactly the same as the Amiga version, uh, which is not really surprising. But, you know, in both of these cases, I think they lost a great opportunity. Uh, the Atari ST and the Amiga had great music capabilities. And considering the theme of the game is a bard, you'd think they would have worked that into the gameplay somehow. But, alas. Now here we have the perhaps the most unusual uh, conversion. This is for the Nintendo Entertainment System. Originally released in Japan in the 90s and then uh, eventually released in the U.S., now, it looks like they have taken an existing engine from some other game, some uh, Japanese role-playing game, and pretty much force-fit the uh, Bard's Tell, some of the Bard's Tell content in here. It's almost uh, surreal. I'm uh, <laughs> not really that impressed with this version. It's supposed to be smaller, a lot more uh, limited. But, you know, uh, at the same time, a lot of people got their first exposure to the Bard's Tale through the uh, these uh, Nintendo games, so... I won't knock it too much, but you should really try the other versions. Now here we have the Destiny Knight by Michael Cranford. And this is the first sequel to The Bard's Tale, and it's the only one that Michael Cranford himself actually worked on. 
He had a falling out with Brian Fargo in Interplay. He thought that he wasn't getting the royalties that he deserved. And, you know, I've only heard his side of the story, but apparently uh, Brian only wanted to offer him a very small royalty for uh, the Bard's Tale games, even though he did 90% of the work. Now, this game, though, it, it has a lot of uh, nice features to it. You've got more than one city you can go to now. Instead of just Scarab Bray, you can go to several other cities. Uh, there's a few other features like casinos and banks. Overall, uh, definitely a, a worthy sequel, and you should check it out if you are a fan of the first game. Now, if Bard's Tale 1, 2, and 3 weren't enough to satiate you, you could buy this Bard's Tale construction set uh, released in 1991. Very intuitive, very easy to use interface here that lets you create your own uh, modules, adventures, levels, whatever, uh, using the uh, latest version of the Bard's Tale engine. Now, a little bit of trivia here is that this was programmed by none other than Timothy Kane, who I interviewed earlier, and obviously had a big influence on Tim. Who knows, maybe we wouldn't have uh, the Fallout series today <laughs> if it hadn't been for Bard's Tale and uh, Tim's uh, role in creating this construction set. A nice little link to our previous history. And there you have it, folks. The Bard's Tale. One of the truly great computer role-playing game classics. As difficult as it is fun, and I tell you, if you have beaten it, you have earned a real achievement, friend. Now, I would treat you to a remake of my own, of the classic Bard's Tale, namely a live-action remake of the introduction. So if you will permit me... The song I sing will tell the tale of a cold and wintry day, of castle walls in torch-lit halls and a price men had to pay. <clears throat> when evil fled and brave men bled, the dark one came to stay. Till men of old, for blood and gold, had rescued Scarabray. 